Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. In this video today, I want to return to the subject of lamb again, because I love lamb. I just, I love the flavor of lamb. I rarely ever buy beef. If I buy beef, I'll buy something like stew meat to make my Texas chili, or I'll buy ground beef to do my recipe for Tuscan meatloaf or to make meatballs. If I'm going to buy red meat, I almost always buy lamb because I love lamb. I love the flavor of lamb. So what I want to make today is a Moroccan dish. This is lamb and prune tagine. Tagine means stew. And this is going to be a slow cooked meat. In fact, I expect it to be so tender after being cooked for two hours, the lamb should be almost falling apart. So. Let me get into the ingredients I'm going to be using today for making my lamb and prune tagine. I'm going to be using a couple of tablespoons of olive oil for frying. This is not extra virgin. This is just pure olive oil, good enough for frying. And then a couple of tablespoons of butter. I have one and a half pounds roughly of boneless lamb or 680 grams. Or you can use six to eight lamb shanks if you can find them. I couldn't find lamb shanks. Lamb shanks are very tough and therefore they benefit from long, slow cooking. I buy my lamb at the warehouse store in the boneless leg of lamb and then I cut it up and wrap it into small pieces. These range anywhere from four to six ounces each. If I want to cook for one person, I pull one piece out of the freezer. If I want to cook for six people, I'll, cook, I'll take six pieces out. It makes it really easy to work with. So, again, about one and a half pounds here of boneless lamb. I have one large onion, two medium cloves garlic, two cups of chicken stock. This is actually my homemade turkey stock. One generous pinch of saffron threads, or if you wanted to, you could substitute with an eight, one eighth of a teaspoon of turmeric, one half teaspoon ground ginger, two cinnamon sticks, or in my case I'm using one quarter teaspoon of ground cinnamon, freshly ground black pepper to taste, four sprigs coriander, which is also cilantro, the zest of one half of a lemon, about 12 ounces, which is 340 grams roughly, of pitted prunes, and then two tablespoons of honey, and finally for garnish, one tablespoon of sesame seed. So those are the ingredients that I'm going to be using today. I have a large Dutch oven heating on the stove here. And there's my butter going in there and there's some olive oil. Again, this is just cooking olive oil. I'm going to let that come up to the heat. And then I'm going to use this for browning my lamb. As soon as that butter starts to sizzle and is done sizzling. Okay, I think that pan is warm enough. I'm going to do these just three at a time. Again, I've got six pieces here. I don't want to crowd my pan. And I'm going to brown these on all sides, take those out, move them to a plate, and do the other three. I've reduced my heat to medium. I'm going to put my chopped onion in there and I just want to cook this until it's tender and translucent, about five minutes. It may look like those onions have caramelized, but they have not. That's just this fond from the bottom of the pan, from the browning. You do want to keep that because that's what gives you a nicer flavor. So now I want to add some, my garlic. I'm just going to use a garlic crusher to put this in. Beautiful. Just kind of stir that in a little bit. You don't want to cook that garlic too much. It doesn't have to be at this point. 
And now I want to put my stock in. My stock is frozen. So I'm going to let that thaw in there. It'll take a few minutes for that to thaw down. And then I'll be ready to add my other ingredients. My stock has melted and it is just now coming up to the boil. So I'm going to add my spices and herbs. There's my saffron threads. As far as how many threads are there, I'd say there's a good two dozen threads. It's quite a bit, actually. That's my ground ginger, cinnamon, and then my cilantro or coriander. That's tied together with a string because I'm going to pull that out afterwards. And now I'm going to put my meat in there again. Okay. And then I'll be covering this and I'm going to let this simmer for about an hour. In about half of an hour, I'll take the cover off and turn that meat over. Total cooking time on low should be about an hour, and then I'll be ready for the next step. Oh, before I do one thing, I want to add my pepper. Get some fresh ground black pepper in there. Okay, that's all my ingredients for this step. I don't have one of those lemon zesters that I can zest long strings off of this lemon, but I do want long strings. Kind of like a chiffonade. So I'm going to peel half of this lemon. Maybe just one more. And then I'm just going to cut these very, very small strings. I don't want a, a, um, a julienne. I want a very small string, like a, well, what I call a chiffonade. I think of actually julienne as being small strings, and I think of a chiffonade as being small threads. It's being a little fussy, I suppose, but part of the beauty of good cooking is the presentation, right? Okay, so I have my lemon zest to the chiffonade, and then I'll set this aside. I am, in the meantime, heating my ugly stainless steel pan on the stove. One of these days a great cookware company will recognize my genius and send me a beautiful set of pots and pans to feature in my videos. Those are my sesame seeds. I want to give them a really light toasting. This pan is going to get very hot and they will probably scorch if I don't get them out of there quickly. So I have a little aluminum bowl or stainless steel bowl rather ready. And as soon as these look like they're changing color, I'm going to get them out of there. I'm already seeing some coloration. Okay, I don't know whether that shows up on the video or not. But those are just come up to a nice golden color. I'm going to turn my heat off and get these out of that hot pan before they scorch. And there are my toasted sesame seeds. This meat 
has been cooking now for 30 minutes. I did turn it over after 30 minutes. Did I say 30? It's been cooking for 60 minutes and I turned it over after 30 minutes. All I'm going to do now is add about half. What I ended up doing was um, chiffonading that the whole um, zest of that lemon. I'm going to use the other half of the chiffonade. I still have this left. I'm going to use that for garnish at the end. Okay, so that goes in. That's all at this point. And then this cooks for another 30 minutes. All right, my timer has just gone off again. So now I want to add, this is the juice of that lemon. I'm going to put that in there. Going to put the honey in there. I do want to taste that for salt. My red handled tasting spoon. Let's see how this tastes. Gonna need a little bit of salt, maybe um, half a teaspoon to start off with. It's got a nice flavor though. All right. Again. Mmm. Oh, that's nice. It's got a lemony flavor. A little bit of sweetness from the honey. And then finally the prunes go in. I remember a commercial on TV years ago about prunes. The comical fruit. Okay. So now this has to cook again for another 30 minutes and then I'll be ready to serve. In the meantime, I'm going to be cooking some rice. A typical dish to serve this with is couscous. I don't have couscous, so I'm going to be using rice. All right, my tagine is done. Turning the heat off. Oh, I can smell those prunes now. A nice dark stew. I'm going to test that sauce one more time for flavor. I don't think it's going to need any salt now. No, that's excellent. It's got a sweetness from the honey, but it's got a tartness from the prunes. I want to pierce it with a fork. Pierce the meat and see how tender it is. Oh, that's nice. Okay, I'm ready to plate this and then see how good it tastes. How I would plate this. is I would put some rice in the plate like that. <coughs> put maybe a couple of these pieces on here, although I would consider, oh gosh, that looks so good. I would consider each one of these to be a single serving. Maybe put some of these dates around the top.
like so. And then finally get some of this nice broth or syrup going over the top. Beautiful. And then finally, here are my toasted sesame seeds. Put those on top. And there it is. Lamb and prune tagine. A Moroccan dish. The last step is to see how good this tastes. I so want to know how this is going to taste because I haven't eaten yet today and here it is almost four o'clock. This is the first solid food I've had so far today. I just had oral surgery yesterday but I'm doing fine. I'm doing a video already. Oh. Melt in your mouth tender. That lamb is I want to taste some of this rice with the sauce on it and prune. Mmm. It's got a sweetness to it, but it's also got a bit of a sourness to it from the prunes and the lemon juice. Oh man, that is so tasty. It's very rich. It's kind of a savory sweet flavor. That is absolutely fantastic. Lamb and prune tagine, a Moroccan dish. I hope you make this and enjoy it as much as I do. As for me, I've got to go eat my dinner, so excuse me. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.